What the hell are those? I just got grabbed by a stalker. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> Stop it. I mean, it's only a guess, but... Ah! Hello everyone, it's your boy Lucal, and welcome back to Subnautica. So this is episode 7. The last episode was kind of a special one because it was like a two-parter, like a very long episode that I recorded in basically one session and then split into two uh, videos. So last time I played, I went to look for a bunch of life pods, uh, started building my base, and then we went back into the Aurora and explored, I think, all of it. So I feel like we're kind of reaching this point in the game now where like it's opening up. We've received a lot of hints and clues and like explored all of these life pods, coordinates. So now I think we're really going to get into the meat of the game where we need to like go out and explore and like kind of take things into our own hands. I wanted to again say a big thank you to everyone who's been watching the playthrough so far, everyone who's been leaving comments, liking the video. Um, it's been really great to have so many new faces and new people discovering the channel and engaging with the playthrough. I've gotten so many really kind and positive comments and it means a lot. I actually got quite a few comments of people calling me Captain Lucal, which is really endearing, really cool. I'm thought, you know what? I am the captain, goddammit. I am the captain, so let's start acting like one. <laughs> so yeah, inspired by these comments, I was feeling a little silly and I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and get myself a real captain hat just for this playthrough. I thought that might be fun, so here we go. I am the captain now. Now, of course, my camera is mirrored, so it doesn't really read captain, but anyways. So two quick little things just before we get into the episode. Number one is I'm doing a poll on the channel to decide what game I'm going to be playing after Tunic, which is my playthrough that's running on Tuesday. So the three options are Detroit Become Human, Prey, or Lies of P. I would really appreciate if you took just a quick moment, check out the link in the pinned comment of this video and go vote for what game you would like to see next on the channel. There's already been a lot of votes, but I wanted to let you know in the Subnautica playthrough because that's where most of my audience is. And then the second thing was when I first reached my milestone of a thousand subscribers, I did a QA and a video on the channel and so now that I've reached 2000, I was thinking of maybe doing another one. Although things have been going so fast now with Subnautica that by the time I post this video, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be at 3000 already, which is just insane. <laughs> But yeah, again, I made a community post about that Q&A, so if there's any question you would like to ask me, please check out the link in the pinned comment and uh, you can ask your questions there. And if I get enough of them, then I'll do a video. And if I don't get enough, then I will just uh, do nothing. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Now it's time to jump into the episode. So without any further ado, this is your captain saying, let's dive right in. Here we are, my little friend, the rabbit ray there. Um... Wait, you can jump? Just kidding. Um, so, like I said, it has been like a bit over a week since the last time I played because I recorded basically two episodes. Uh, it's been a while since the last time I played, so uh, I might be like a little bit rusty. So let me just quickly get reacquainted with the controls, please. Um, we got our base. Welcome aboard, Captain. A. Now this feels actually appropriate. Uh, something I would really love to do is get that water filtration thing that we found in the Degassi habitat. Water filtration machine. Ah, but we need the aerogel and we don't know how to get the aerogel. So this thing's gonna have to wait. I did kind of want the glass dome for which we needed lithium enameled glass. Glass. So I have one stalker tooth. I'm gonna start by going to grab some water. I uh, just need a little bladder fish. Yeah, I think we can get that uh, water filtration machine. We're gonna need to keep collecting bladder fish for water, which is fine. Let's get like plenty of it, so we don't need to worry about it for a while. I feel just kind of like disoriented when it's nighttime. I feel like how, what do you call animals that are only active during the day, like diurnal animals? I feel like one of those, where like when it's nighttime, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm kind of, I feel like I'm just kind of incapable of doing anything, you know? I need to wait until I get some actual sunlight. All right, let's get some Water. I haven't tried my knife yet, but I'm sure I'm gonna get an occasion very soon. So slurp. 
slurp. Let's keep one for later. Uh, still got my beacon, titanium. I'm going to... Uh, uh, let's bring a nutrient block. Okay. Uh, and I feel really scatterbrained today. I'm sorry, I must be tired or something. It's been kind of a long week, but... Uh, let me get my bearings. Okay. So there's two things I wanted to check after editing the previous episode. One of the things was uh, when I went to the Degassi habitat, I noticed there was like a some kind of hatch on the ground that I think I missed. I saw it while editing, but I missed it when I was playing. Um, Degassi habitat, it's over there. I'm gonna take my Seamoth. I want to go back there, maybe it's nothing, maybe it was like a decoration, but maybe it is the entrance, like something more. So I wanted to double check just to be sure, just to uh, tie up any loose ends, you know? Uh, can I... There we go. Good. Alright, the gassy habitat. Let's go down into that cave. Look at us stalkers. These stalkers are so... Ooh, there's a few two down there. There's like three of them. Let me grab those. For sure. One, two. That stalker lost like a bunch of teeth while <laughs> carrying this metal salvage. Don't scream at me. Alright, so that's some free tooth. With this, we can maybe make that uh, glass dome. They really love to carry these... Uh, the salvage, huh? I, I just need to find an entrance to that underground... <laughs> underground? <laughs> uh, underwater? You know what I mean. That cavern. Let's just find an entrance to it. Uh, I do get a lot of comments about like... I wouldn't consider them spoilers per se. They're more like... Mechanics that I didn't understand or like stuff that I missed. And, like, I do kind of consider those backseating, but I also understand that people are trying to help me, and, like, I don't really... Oh, see this thing there. This is what I, I was talking about. Is this the entrance to something? This is what I want to check. Okay, it's a thermal plant fragment. So, I thought maybe it was a hatch, you know, that led, like, underground? It's a thermal plant fragment, which I don't think I have. Ooh, thermal plant. So what does that do? Thermal plant. Converts heat to energy at medium efficiency. Okay, so I, I guess you could uh, build these on these, uh, like these volcanic vents, like the one we saw in the previous episode, and then you can get your energy from there. But then you would need to connect it to your base with like some kind of cable or like pipe, I assume. Okay, so that's all it was. Uh, oh, there's another one right there. Yeah, that's just another one. That's the same thing. Is there anything else that maybe I missed around here? Shale out diamond. Nice. Is that... It is magnetite. Oh. I needed magnetite for a bunch of stuff. I didn't know it was like down here. So I guess it's like part of this specific bio, maybe, or it's like... I don't know. Modification station, I already have that. Uh, ooh, let's grab all the magnet... Oh, you can scan it. Let's grab all the one we can. Magnetite is an iron oxide valued for its magnetic potential amongst other qualities. It is used in many Federation technologies, including sonar and torpedo systems. Uh, essential for advanced fabrication. Hell yes. Let's grab as many of those as we can. Uh, there's another one. Okay, so they're not too rare, actually. What is that? Oh, it's gold. So why could I scan this fish? Isn't this a fish I've already scanned? This one there? Wait, where's that fish? You? 
No, I've scanned you. Oh wait, let's try this. Uh, let's, let's try the knife. Yeah. Oh, wait, I missed it. <laughs> I picked him up accidentally. Let me just drop it. You get a second chance. Just kidding. Oh, I feel bad. Man, this thing is like simmering with heat. And it doesn't use a battery, which is great. Um, where's that fish I could scan? Is, is it you? No, it's this one, right? An oculus. It looks just like the peeper. But I guess it's like a different version. Oh. Yeah, this looks very similar to the peeper. The specimen shares genetic similarities with the common peeper, while the shallows and the cave systems are separated by just a few meters of rock, foodstuffs and threats in each biome are completely different. It is possible a small school of peepers was once cut off in the caves and the oculus species is how they adapted. Okay, so they have highly developed night vision. Large complex eyeballs provide this herbivore superior vision to the dark and an intense phobia of light. Oh. I mean, it's not really that dark down here, but all right. Lack of beak. While the peeper uses its beak to break down tough corals, the oculus likely feeds on the soft fungal growths of the jelly shroom caves and thus has no need of one. Okay, the caves in which the oculus lives make it hard to escape from fast predators. The oculus has adapted by splitting its tail fin into five separate tendrils. These tendrils prevent it from swimming as fast as its shallow water cousin, but each can be detached and regrown, enabling it to escape more easily when caught. Okay. So kind of like those lizards where like the tail comes off and then it just grows back again. Interesting. It is edible. So peeper. And then oculus. It is lacking the beak. How strange. Hoverfish. Hoopfish. <laughs> the Gary fish. I love the name of this. Boomerang. Different animal gasopod. There is this thing I've mentioned a few times. Acidic pods may be retrieved and repurposed. I haven't been able to retrieve those uh, acidic pods because they kind of just burst when you get close to them. But maybe I'm like missing. I don't know. Jelly ray. Rabbit ray. It's so cute. Sky ray. Impio. Biter. Crab snake. Crab fish. Sand shark and stalker sharpen and put stress on its teeth yeah 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 that's why they were losing their teeth it's because they're biting all this metal salvage leviathans uh, i kind of thought leviathans were like the reapers but i guess it's just like a class of animals it's just the very large animals all right so yeah i hadn't really taken time to explore this biome because these damn crab snakes were like messing me up um where is my sea moth? Where is my sea moth? Oh. Got really turned around there. So we found a few magnetite. What could I make with the magnetite again? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so... I'm so distracted. People always say I'm really distracted and I miss a lot of stuff, but it's because there's so much to think about in this game. It's like, oh, I saw something and then like I read something and then like, oh, I wanted to build this and like, oh, magnetite. What can we do with magnetite? Except the stasis rifle. This is like, I guess, as close to a weapon as you can get. I don't really know if it would work on like huge enemies. I guess we won't know until we try it. Uh, there's a bunch of things I want to build that need a computer chip for which I need some silver. And like silver is still quite hard to find. The Neptune launch platform we could build. We just need some titanium, again some silver, some lead. So it's all like pretty basic materials which would be like step number one of our escape. Hull reinforcement. Uh, making the sea mod like more resistant could be a great thing. You just need titanium, lithium, diamond. Not too hard to find actually. Uh, quite intrigued by this defense system, but again, I assume it mostly works on like smaller predators. A sonar. So it would give you like a map, I guess. We could make it. We just need a copper wire. 
sonar. Detecting and displaying topographical data. I assume that means showing a map like your Sea Glide has, but I don't... It's really hard to read these maps, because like you just see like the bottom of the ocean and it doesn't really tell you that much, you know? Uh, we could upgrade the Repulsion Cannon. Plasteel, I don't know how to make, so this is one we're going to need to figure out. Could get a range upgrade, but I haven't really been using the scanner room. Uh, there's the Cyclops that we don't know how to make yet. Okay, there's actually not that many things that require Magnetite. I just remember seeing it very often, but... It might have been for upgrades that we've actually just found already. And uh, this is... Ooh. Hello. Nuclear reactor fragment. Oh. Renewable energy sources will usually be sufficient for maintaining a small outpost. For everything else, there's nuclear power. Powered by up to four replaceable uranium reactor rods. Do not attempt to replace reactor rods without a full radiation suit. Yeah. Do not attempt to overclock the reactor. Nuclear is ideal for energy intensive operations such as self-sufficient colonies supporting more than 20 people, industrial outposts operating multiple docks and heavy machineries, and uh, research stations housing live specimens. Interesting. Uh, what I would love to install on this Seamoth is like a little grabby arm so I could grab items without actually having to exit my uh, Seamoth. <laughs> you know? So I don't have to deal with these damn crab snakes. But we can explore a little bit because we can go all the way down to 300 meters which we're already kind of almost at. There's some more magnetite. Achoo. I think this sound is just the crab snakes. It's very loud. Yeah. Yeah, you want to attack me, but you can't. Because I'm... S they are so loud. Uh, more magnetite. Did you just... I thought maybe one of them tried to take a bite of my... There wasn't much here. Where are those? Oh, a spotlight. Ooh. A permanent lighting solution developed for installation on existing habitats and facilities automatically rotates on a 180 degree arch. Motion sensitive will track nearby moving objects, draws electricity from main power. Guess that's fair. So yeah, I did miss quite a... Ooh, a power cell charger. Okay, so I missed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. One of two, okay. Uh... Usually the second one isn't too far, so it might be here. I know that I tend to miss the scanning icon in the bottom right. <laughs> uh, usually I only notice it while editing the video. So I'm sorry about that. It's just, it's easy to miss, you know, when you're like moving around and it just only shows up for a brief moment. Notification station. Okay. Uh... Ooh, a cave bush. A purple luminescent species which grows well on hardy terrain away from sunlight. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Have I scanned these big mushrooms? I guess I did. So what if I go inside one of them that doesn't have a snake? 
Uh, okay, there's nothing. I guess it's a good hiding place. I can see why they would... Why they would go in those. Uh, looks like the other... Power cell charger thing is not here, though. Unless, again, I've missed it. So let's just go back in the Seamoth. Um... Uh, okay, so one thing that a lot of people told me in the comments, and it is kind of backseating, but like, in this case, uh, my mod did allow it because it was pretty unlikely that I would have gone back to check, is like, when I went to check on Officer Keen on this island, I went to the coordinates for the island, but I didn't actually go to like the coordinates for the meetup, I guess? In this one case, I will say thank you for letting me know, and I will go back and check to see the coordinates. So it says, The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land, which we did find a dry land. We regrouped one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. So by crash site, they mean the crash site for the Aurora, right? But then it says, Rendezvous coordinates corrupted. Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. So, LifePod19. He says the crash site, so it has to be the Aurora. So I guess we could go to the Aurora and then go southwest and see if we find anything. But like, isn't this what I did? And then all that was there was the island, but I guess there was something else because a lot of people said I missed something big there. So um, I'm going to save. I'm going to eat. Okay, so let's get out of here. And let's see if we can find those uh, coordinates. Here's a very nice reef back. Also, in the last episode, like I found a barnacle on the back of the reef back, but like I couldn't get the metal inside. I don't know why. It said barnacle, but then when I tried, see again, barnacle. Where? Like, hidden in there? Oh, this thing there. Wait, was that silver? Was that silver? Where's the silver? Give me the silver! I can't see because of all this red grass. Where's the silver? <laughs> oh, I need the silver. God damn it, I missed it. So they do carry silver on their back. That's so great. Now I love them even more. Uh, do you have any more? Rouge Grotto. Ugh, ow. Redworth. What's hurting me? Oh, this thing is shooting its spikes at me. Okay, this here is the barnacle, I see. Okay, this one was only copper. Uh, I don't know where that other one is, I think it just clipped through it, and then I lost it. God damn it. Uh, ooh, I'm getting very far away from my Seamoth. So they carry some nice... Uh, uh, these are the barnacle, okay. Violebo. Coral shell plate. Copper. Okay, I wish it was more silver than copper, though. But, okay. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, so that's really good to know that uh, the reef bags can have minerals on their back. I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? It's kind of in the name. <laughs> uh, ugh. Ugh. Okay, yeah, I'm not really a fan of uh, this here. So, 
this is the crash site. Oh, I don't like this. Okay, southwest, southwest. Over there. Isn't this already where we're coming from? Okay, so southwest. Maybe the coordinates are... I was gonna say maybe they're at the bottom of the ocean, but no, he said dry land. So let's just stay on the surface. One and a half kilometers, I mean... Isn't it just this island here? I thought like that's what he was talking about and I already found it. God, it is so dark right now. I guess maybe I didn't go like far enough. Maybe I should have kept going this way. Let's keep going maybe southwest. What the? What is that? Okay, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure I want to find out either. Let's just keep going southwest, I guess. I think the island, I assumed, were the coordinates, but it's not. Like, you're supposed to maybe keep going southwest? I don't really know. Wait, is this the island? Okay, yeah, it just hasn't spawned in yet. <laughs> Again, it's the draw distance in this game, it's kind of... It is so dark right now. I really wish it was uh, daytime. Oh, wait, I see a cloud in front of me. I think maybe there's another island. Because usually clouds mean island. Wait, no, because Southwest is over there. I can't tell if I'm going the right way anymore. Oh. Oh, oh, I don't like this. I'm like, I don't see anything below me. I feel like now I'm going way too far. I don't like this. I don't like this. Especially in nighttime. I'm gonna wait until it's daytime. But no, because it says Aurora Rendezvous Point, so this has to be... This has to be the coordinates. I'm confused. What the hell did I miss? So what are these? What the hell are those? Um... What the... What the hell is this thing? Ancient floater? Oh, it's like a creature? Biodata suggests these vast floaters have matured in an ingenious symbiosis with the land they have attached to. The attached land mass is raised in the water, increasing sunlight and encouraging plant growth as other plants decay, organic residues and nutrients seep into the rock and are consumed by the floater. Okay, yeah, you can see they're, like, attached at the bottom of the island there. That's a very complex way of, uh, feeding yourself. <laughs> These circumstances must have held for thousands of years for a floater to reach this size. Immature floaters are born near the surface from where they sink to the seabed attaching to any stable surface defined on the way. Those individuals fortunate enough to attach to a digestible nutrient source will grow in size, thus increasing their buoyancy and drawing whatever they are attached to closer to the surface. In extreme circumstances, a number of floaters may attach to a Leviathan-class life form. Oh. Oh. So like a reefback or a reaper? Forcing it to the surface and effectively asphyxiating it. Oh shit. The body will be consumed over a number of months until eventually dissolving, leaving the floaters free to attach to a new host. That's pretty gruesome. Those creatures which successfully raise a landmass to the surface are rewarded with a burgeoning and permanent food supply, allowing them finally to reproduce and begin the cycle again. Assessment? Incredible. <laughs> wow. Okay. And then what about these? This must be like the tentacles of the floaters, I guess. 
the hell? Why is there like rocks falling? Oh. Huh. Yeah, there's like rocks falling from the, I guess because like the island is being like damaged by the these floaters. Huh. That's pretty crazy. Because, yeah, usually an island is just like a landmass that also pokes out of the water, but in this case, it's just like this block of rock that the floaters like pushed up to the surface and then like trees and stuff start growing on it. What are those? Mushrooms? Why is it gotta be so damn dark down here? You know? I think I've seen those before. Uh... Wait, wait, wait. I know this phenomenon. That's that thing that attacked me. Uh. Oh. I'm getting uncomfortable. It's so damn dark down here. And this music is very ominous. I kind of want to scan these. I can't. I don't think I've scanned those. Like, I don't like being this... I don't like being this deep with no light. So I'm gonna pussy out and go back to the surface. Okay, I don't know, like, the deal about this, uh... Southwest? Again, I feel like a kilometer and a half southwest of the crash site is this island, isn't it? Or is it like something else? It's really hard to tell, and like I don't want to go too far from... Ugh, I'm already like running out of water and uh, food. It would be like over there? But no, because now I'm not... Okay, I don't... I don't know what this, like, coordinates thing is. I don't know. But, like, I can't go down this deep, because I don't have enough water and food, so, uh... Seek fluid intake. <sighs> that fucking scared me. Got a nice reef bag down here. Man, that's a big one. That's a big one. Hello, you beautiful. Do you have some silver for me? Some copper. I guess I'll guess I'll grab it. Even though that's not really what I want. Anything else? Copper again. Yes, nice. Uh, oh, there's another one there. Uh, man. I know what you're thinking. Luke, why don't you just head to the edge of the map? Why don't you just explore the bottom of the ocean? And here's the reason why. I look around and I don't see anything and that scares the shit out of me. I've been seeing the word uh, thalassophobia in my comments a lot. I do have that. You bet your ass I have that. And uh, so you're probably wondering, well, how are you going to be able to finish this game? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess we're going to progressively dip our toes deeper and deeper. At least I'm going to try, but... I'm still very much terrified of, uh... 
Yeah, so it's mostly copper, not a lot of silver. But yeah, I'm still just terrified of going too deep, of running into some giant thing. Like, if I can see the bottom and there's light, I'm fine. But if I don't have those, I am not fine. Oh, this is salt. I, I need quartz. Lead. Special equipment. Can you use, like, a knife or is that not enough? Okay, no. Knife doesn't work. That's kind of what I expected. You need some kind of drill. Okay, I really need to get back to my life pod and drink some water. Um... Man, maybe I don't deserve this captain hat after all. I said it was time to act like a real captain, but I'm like... I'm too scared. I'm scared! This game is scary! Like, exploring is fine if I kind of know what to expect, you know? I kind of know where I'm going and like... But of course, that's not what the fun of this game is. It's not knowing what to expect. You know, maybe I should just rip off the bandage, like jump head first into danger, and then like once you've seen it, it's not as scary. That's how it was in uh, Echoes of the Eye. I was terrified the entire way, and then like once I started seeing the, the scary stuff, I was like, ah, oh, I guess it's not so bad. <laughs> okay, I need some water and quickly. Would really love that water filtration machine. If only I knew how to make the aerogel. Aero, aerogel? Uh, I wanna get you. I wanna get you. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Here, Gary. <laughs> I'm gonna get you, Gary. All right, let's drink a bunch of water. I wish it gave you more. It doesn't give you that much, unfortunately. Vital signs stabilizing. Good. Um, I'm gonna go drop some stuff in my locker. All this magnetite. Welcome aboard, Captain. I thank you. Yeah, let's put all of this magnetite in there. And then all this titanium. This copper. Silver. Diamond. Stalker tooth. I'm gonna need more of these storage. Salvage. Uh, okay, let's maybe make the battery charger. I think I should have enough silver and copper for those, so... Let's get the silver, let's get some copper, some titanium. Um, could try and make some glass. Let's get those and see what we can build with that. Okay, I can make the copper wire. I need two silver for the wiring kit. Grav trap. Artificial gravity to attract light objects and small creature. I haven't tried making one of those because I assume it's like a one-time thing. Like a consumable. I could make one just to see how it works. See if like maybe you can reuse it. Or if it's like a tool or like I'm not really sure. It, it, it says it's a deployable so let's see how it works. It, it, oh it's big. Okay. So you need to assign it to a thing. Okay, so if I just drop that here... Oh... Okay, and how long is it going to hold these things? Oh no, it got the rabbit ray! Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so you can just like kind of grab these very easily then. And can they run away? Not really, it seems. And how long is this thing active? Is it just active forever? I mean, that's very useful to grab fish. I'll give you that. OK, 
Can I just eat those? Um, okay, so pretty useful if you want to grab fish like very quickly. Uh, but I mean, grabbing fish, you know, it doesn't really take that long anyways. It is pretty cool, I guess. It's nice to know that the option is there, for sure. Um, okay, I do have another silver in there. With this other one, I could make a wiring kit. Then with the wiring kit, we could make... And man, if only I had more aerogel, I could make the water filtration. I could make some glass with this. With our quartz. Okay, well, I can make the battery charger. So that would be a very good thing to have. Let's make that. Uh, battery charger, can I put that there? Yes, I can. Oh, you can re I think I can replace this thing with this thing? Is that what that means? There we go. Battery charger. Camera drone. I do have these cameras in the scanning room. I could use the cameras to try and go explore without being in danger myself. That could help with my, like, uh, phobia. Because <laughs> if you're just a camera, it's not really as scary, you know? Scanner room range upgrade. I could get this. Although, again, not really using this thing that much. So... Excess battery charger. Oh. Okay. So you can put four batteries at a time in this. Do I have some empty batteries? I do. I have like two. Okay, well then let's recharge our stuff. Wait. Oh, I have a power cell, not a battery. Alright, so access it, then you just put your battery in there. Oop. Oop. And then those are gonna get recharged like overnight. How fast? Okay, it takes a while, but that's fine. We can just leave those there and uh, come back to it later. Uh, we could use this magnetite, titanium, copper, get that range upgrade. Yeah, scanner room range upgrade. Let's do that. Okay, right, and that's an item. Which you then slot this thing here. Yeah. Okay, so now the range is bigger, but like... How does that work exactly? Um, wait, what? A data box? Oh, new stuff has shown up now. I used to have only two pages, now there's three? What's a data box? There? Okay, that's pretty far away. That's the only one, too. Where is that? It's like over there? Northwest of here? I could try and go there with the camera, let's try that. Control camera. Data box. Okay. Uh, this thing is not very fast, which, you know, makes sense. So, yeah, it is northwest. So, it's as I thought, where the map is kind of like in the same uh, direction that you are. So, if you see something northwest on the map, that's the same as it is for you. Uh, the camera also has like quite a lot of power. I'm only at 98. It goes down very slowly. So it's great. You can use the camera, kind of go explore, find where the thing that you're looking for is. What the? Oh, okay. Didn't know this wreck was here. A 
data box. By data box, do you mean like data pad? Oh, oh no, it's... Oh, I, uh, I was... I just got grabbed by a stalker. <laughs> no, don't take me to your nest. Okay, so... All right, all right, we can go and grab that. Ah, uh, shit, Warning. it's night time. Well, shit. Uh, we really need a solution to this power situation in our base. We need some kind of other power source. What other power source could we get? Uh, bioreactor, we would need another wiring kit. Then some lubricant, we could make that. Compost organic matter into electrical energy. So just like fish? I guess we could do that. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some resource gathering and base building here, so it's gonna be like a little bit boring, but I need to do this thing in order to be more efficient, so... I want to make a bunch of lockers so that I can have all of my resources in one spot to make it easier for me because I don't want to always be going to these lockers like outside. So I'm going to build like a few lockers in here. And then, so it's just quartz and titanium. We can get those. Let's do this while it's nighttime. Uh, let's make some lockers. Then in the lockers, I can put the stuff I need to make these other things. I want to do that reactor so that we stop losing power in the night. Um, okay, I have enough to make another one already. Let's make another locker here. Alright, so that's another one. Let's put our glass in there. Let's put the magnetite in there. Um, nutrient block can go there. The graph trap, it's pretty cool. Um, I guess I could just drop it outside and just let it exist there. And it's gonna grab a bunch of fish for me. Uh, it doesn't have a power bar, so I don't think it's actually affected by a battery. I guess it just works forever. Uh, I just feel bad for these little rabbit rays, though, <laughs> that get caught in it. That kind of sucks, but... So... Alright. All right, all right. Let's go out. Apologies to the rabbit rays. They don't really come down here, so we could, like, just drop it here. Let's drop it like it's hot. There you go. This is gonna keep grabbing fish for us. Uh, in the meantime... Oh, I don't have a battery to recharge this, actually. Always need stuff. Okay. Uh, for the battery, I just need like a mushroom and some titanium, I think. There's always something to do. Uh, some copper. I can find some copper. Wait, I don't need to make another battery. I have a bunch of batteries already, don't I? This thing's also very noisy. I don't really like the noise it makes. <laughs> okay, I think... I think some of the fish do manage to escape eventually? Not sure. Uh, where are my lockers? Right here. This one's empty. Okay, let's grab all this stuff. And then, uh, okay, all this stuff as well. Um, you can stay in there. All right. Where are all the batteries I had before? Like all the batteries I found in, uh, okay, they're all in here. Okay, I'm just going to move some of this stuff to my uh, base. Basically, I want to be able to just always go to my base without coming into the life pod, so... Let's recharge. Alright, this recharges this. So again, I'm just like 
transporting resources from one place to the next. That's kind of boring to watch, but... Welcome aboard, Captain. Just doing some organizing, you know? Alright, so this stuff... This can all go in there. Gold, sulfur, lithium, power cell even, ion cube. Then let's put everything in here. The batteries will go put in the charger. This I can always keep like one uh, first aid kit on myself, just in case I get hurt. Let's put the batteries in there. Boop, boop. There we go. Let's go grab what's left in the life pod. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Salvage, quartz, fiber mesh, power cell. Uh, let's keep like two batteries. Flare, Cyclops engine. We're not going to use that for a while. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right, so now all of my resources are in these lockers. I'm going to make another locker for which I need one quartz, two titanium. So, do I even have that? <laughs> okay, one quartz, two titanium. Here we go. So let's make a third locker. All right, so now all of our storage is here. Now, what else can I make? Getting a radio in here would be great. That's just titanium and copper. So titanium. All right, titanium, copper. Let's get a radio. Uh, this should be somewhere I can see when I walk in here, so like, could be on the wall here. Could be there instead of this poster. <laughs> I mean, right, we'll put the poster in another place, I guess. Let's do radio right there. Okay, nice. Now, fabricator, titanium, gold, table coral sample. Titanium, gold, and then coral sample. Do I still have one? Let me go grab some coral. <laughs> Look at the number of fish stuck in there. These poor fish. I feel kind of bad. Table, coral. Whoop. All right. A fabricator. Now with this, we don't really need to go into the life pod anymore. We have everything we need here. We just need to make it so this base is always powered. Uh, and for that, we need the reactor. So, aquarium. Self-sustaining aquatic habitat. How nice. Modification station we already have. Indoor grow bed. Uh, Alright, now that we have all these basics, Let's think about getting this bioreactor. So, three titanium, a wiring kit, and some lubricant. Oh, power transmitter. Okay, so I guess if you find like a vent, you can put the thermal plant on top of it and then put a bunch of like power transmitter along the way and then those transmit the power to your base, right? But, well, there's no, there's no volcanic vent anywhere near me. But that's fine, we do have the sun. Uh, we do have other ways to get energy, that's fine. We can use the bioreactor, so... Three titanium. One, two... 
Uh, let's get the salvage. Here's the titanium. <laughs> Look at all these fish. Oh my god. Okay, so I think they'd never run away. I feel so bad for these poor rays. I'm sorry. Lubricant. And then some silver. Oh, I never scanned those. Hey! Creep vine seeds. Mature creep vine plants that have survived the predation of small herbivores produce these bioluminescent seed clusters, which may be knocked loose by currents or consumed and later deposited by predators. The embryo is surrounded by a thick oil and silicone layer, which would disperse into the ground as the outer skin deterior deteriorated. This may provide the seedling with the nutrients it needs to survive the low-light conditions on the seabed. Vital alien resource construction applications. Indeed. So, uh, let's grab some. There we go. So that's our lubricant. Now the trickier thing is getting some, uh, silver. Silver. Ooh, there's one right there. Very nice. I just need one more. Let's see if we can get lucky. Uh, I love how much oxygen I have now. That's really great. I can be out there for a long time. Without needing to resurface. Gold. Look at this guy. <laughs> Just moonwalking. And there's our silver. Hell yes. Alright, we got lucky this time. Oh. Hey, that's a new one. What is that? A mesmer? It look what the f fucking hell was that? Wait, what? <laughs> what the hell just happened? Small carnivorous life form with a unique hunting mechanism that enables it to hypnotize its foes? Is that what just happened? Did it hypnotize me? The mesmer swims using a number of wings which can be angled up and forwards on approaching its prey. Tiny lenses on the surface can be tilted independently to create mesmerizing patterns which flood the victim's brain with enticing messages interpreted in whatever form is most convincing by the target. The mesmer can open the jaw-like recess in its protective outer shell in order to error, share its beauty. Do not resist. Draw closer. I love how even our computer is apparently affected by this thing. Because like this is our computer kind of writing this, right? How weird. But like, didn't we just grab it? Oh, we didn't. Let me grab it. Oh, I can't grab it? What if I eat you, huh? How about that? What if I just eat you? Is this thing invincible? This damn thing is invincible. What the hell? Okay, well, never mind. Here. Lead. It like talked to me, but I couldn't I can't tell what it said. It said like Okay, it it didn't register. I I don't really know what it said to me. Like get closer? Something like that? Are these, like, really rare, or... How come I've never seen one before? That was weird. <laughs> um... Okay, well, let's go back to base. That was really strange. The effect it did... I thought, like, that voice was talking to me again, because the effect was kind of similar, but... It was, like, something else. 
Maybe the voice that talked to us is like an evolved form of the Mesmer, like a more evolved version. Weird. Alright, so let's get in here. Let's make some lubricant. Let's make a wiring kit. And now we can make the reactor. Hell yeah. Okay, uh, I guess let's make it upstairs. Right? Could be... Could be here. Sure. So, bioreactor. Oh! Okay, it's very big. Um, hmm. I feel like maybe that should be its own room. But if I make another room, I think I'm gonna need more reinforcements first. Um, for the reinforcements, I need more lithium. Lithium? I do have one lithium. So, let's reinforce the base. Like, can I just build these anywhere? Also, I made the mistake of not saving in a long time, so uh, let's do that. Can I just build these reinforcements anywhere? No, it has to be in one of these rooms, like an all-purpose room. Uh, let's... Yeah, let's put one there, sure. Okay, so hull strength is not 13. So... I should make another hatch. I don't think I have enough quartz, though. I don't. I could make a bed. <laughs> Didn't I want to make a bed before? A single bed. Yeah, let's make a bed in here. <laughs> um, here, sure. Oh, you can sleep? How about that? We can actually sleep. Now, what does sleeping actually do? Is it like morning now? Does time actually pass? Okay, I for some reason I didn't expect you could actually sleep because... How it would work in something like Minecraft is like... If there's a bed anywhere in the world, you can usually use it. So because I couldn't use the beds in the Aurora, I just figured maybe it's only decoration. But you can actually use them, that's awesome. So maybe when it's nighttime, I can just go to sleep and come back, but... Okay, interesting. Um, well, let's go out s Wait, no, because I went to sleep and now it's nighttime. Okay, what if I... Welcome aboard, Captain. Also, wait, if it's nighttime, how come my base still has power? I mean, it is going down, but usually it, like, just turned off automatically. Huh. Okay, what if I just go to sleep again? Can I do that? You are not yet tired enough to sleep. Oh. Oh. So maybe time did pass, but now I'm not tired, so I can't sleep anymore. Interesting. I'll have to try again, like, going to sleep when it's nighttime to see that... To see if when I wake up it's actually morning. Uh, what I want to make is like make another room. Like an all purpose room. Six titanium, huh? Alright, let's make another room. I don't really like the layout of my base that much, like, it could be much better, but it's my first attempt. I'm probably gonna make another base later in the game, so, you know. 
yeah, I want it to be like connected here. Can I do that? Can I make it like connect automatically? Why can I not be here? Like this is where I want it to be, but it's saying that it can't be there? Why not? It could be down at the bottom. Uh, it can be there. I, I guess that's fine. I'll just put it up there. It's just a room to put my reactor anyway, so... There you go. Okay, so minus 1.3 to base strength, that's fine. So... Eh. Okay, well now I need more titanium. Uh, now this ladder is kind of a, in a weird spot, but that's fine. That's fine. Um... Oh shit, now I need more titanium. <laughs> God damn it. Alright, let's go back outside. Let's get some titanium. Now I really want this ladder to be somewhere else. <laughs> I think I'm gonna deconstruct it and just build it like. Can I make it somewhere else? In the middle? Here? I guess in the middle makes sense. Me? Yeah, I guess in the middle is fine. So, let's get our titanium from the salvage. Let's make some water. Alright, now that that's done, let's build our reactor in here. Here we go. Bioreactor. Uh, yep, like this. A reliable power source is a critical step towards oh, self-defense. Damn, now we're at 500 maximum power. Of your achievements to motivate you in times of despair. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, inactive. Compost organic matter. So just any organic matter? What about water? Only organic items. Okay, yeah. So like fish? Um, so this 500 power is specific to the reactor. My solar power can't go higher than 75. What if I had more uh, solar panel though? But no, it doesn't matter because I want my station to be active at night. So I definitely need like an alternative to the solar panel. So let's try and go grab a bunch of uh, fish and see what happens if you put some fish in the reactor. Or maybe, like, these, uh, mushrooms would work well. Maybe. You guys are going to power my base! I really didn't think this, the... The rabbit rays were gonna be small enough to be caught by the graph trap. All right, so. Okay, these do work. The acid mushrooms, the fish. Active. And it's charging up. Oh, you can see it filling up with like goop. This weird like organic goop just made of fish and mushrooms. Ugh. So, is the power gonna go down by itself? Like, basically, does it prioritize taking the power from the solar cells, or does it take the power from the generator first? And how fast are these things being consumed? Like, how much is one mushroom worth in power, basically? Uh, we can make some experiments and figure it out later. 
So our base is coming along pretty nicely. Actually, I'm gonna move my uh, my little plushies up to my room. There you go. The posters too, actually. The posters feel like they should be in my bedroom. Let's make it nice and cozy. There we go. Keep calm. Uh, I should spread them out a bit more. But like, I might use these walls for something else, so... There we go, that's some nice decoration in my room. Maybe like a little shelf. A little shelf to put my... You have to be able to put the plushie on the desk, right? Or a bench? No, let's, let's do a desk. Let's put it like... Here. Okay, please tell me I can put the plushie on this desk. <laughs> Nice. Alright, there we go. That's more like it. And... There we go. Very nice. This is coming along very nicely. It's getting pretty cozy. Um... Alright. Now that all of this is done, uh, let's go back to what we were doing before, like 30 minutes ago, which was... Uh, right. Controlling the camera here. Let's get this camera back to... Oh, actually... Can you... I think you can pick up the cameras, right? Because I could just leave it here. I can just leave the camera here. The camera will act as a beacon. Also, there's a little passage in the back. Interesting. Where does this lead? I think maybe the further away it is from the base, the more like the image is kind of bad. See, now I'm like 300 meters away from base and it seems to be kind of at, at its limit. But uh, let's just leave it here. And then it's going to act as a beacon for me to go and retrieve it, right? Because uh, it's one of my beacons right there. Uh, I think it's camera two. Yeah, there it is. So now I can just go there. Hell yeah. All right, so let's go grab our Seamoth. Things are getting good. We've got kind of a rhythm now. All systems online. Uh, so, a data box. It's probably for an upgrade that I already have. Because uh, it's not that far away from the base. Also, see these little floaters there? These are the same ones. See, you can see they're actually holding this rock up already. Just like the big ones do, just on a much smaller scale. So these are like the little baby versions. <laughs> hey, dude. How's it going? Uh, maybe don't fart on me. Uh, that's fine. All right, let's go grab our camera back. So yeah, unfortunately, the further away the camera gets, the more it's kind of doesn't seem to work. All right, so let's see what's in there. Do I need to open that? Can I just go from behind? Uh, oh, aha! A beacon fragment. Well, we know how to make beacons already. And then, uh, ooh. Let's repair this. Which opens this door. Hello. Uh, sea glide, we have that already. And what's in here? Okay, yeah. As I assumed, it's something we already have. It might have been a sea glide, might have been like... I don't know. Uh, graph trap fragment. Stasis rifle. Okay, so it's it's all stuff we already have, but we'll get them still. Just for the titanium. This door is closed. Uh, no signal. Mobile vehicle bay. Have that already. 
anything else we don't already have? Stasis rifle. Okay, so... All stuff we have already, which is fine. Uh, this one is close to home, so I think I was meant to find it earlier. There's a... Huh. Let's just grab our camera and then... Oh, it got... Shit, it got picked up by a stalker, I think. God damn it. Bring this back to me, you thief! That's my camera! Don't you hate when someone just steals your camera? Come on, man. That's not... Oh! Wait, where is it? Okay. Where did you hide it? Oh. Who's that? Huh. Did you go through, like, down there? Or... Where the hell is it? It says it's, like, there. Behind this rock. Let me get back to the surface. <sighs> Where did you put my camera? Is there like a secret passage you guys have been using? Like some kind of back door? Some back door I don't know about. I guess the simplest way would just be to control the camera from my base. I could just do that. Because I think they actually, like, placed it in... Oh! There he goes with it again. Give me that thing! That's mine! <laughs> Stop it! I'm gonna... I'm gonna fucking hit you. If you don't give this back to me. This belongs to me. Yeah, that's right. You better drop it. Ah, my inventory is full. Uh, let's drop a divine. This belongs to me. Thank you. Sorry I had to hit you. I didn't want to do that, but... You left me no choice. That's what happens, man. Welcome aboard, Captain. Do not touch another man's camera drone. Alright, let's go back. Uh, I could maybe check if there's anything else interesting in the scanning room. If not, I will go with my initial plan from way back in the previous episode, which was going back to the alien island. And, uh, oh god, I thought that was like some kind of monster. <laughs> going back to the alien island and... Uh, just investigating these weird aliens that were like shooting these bubbles at us, you know? Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you. I should give a name to this computer. Hmm. Could call her like... Does the computer have a name? It just says log. Hmm. PDA? PETA? I could call her PETA, I guess. PETA! Uh, thank you, PETA. Alright, PETA is the name of the computer now. It's official. Uh, let me put the camera back. <laughs> right here. There we go. So now our base has plenty of power. We have 542 power. Holy crap. No new messages. All my batteries are fully charged. So that's great. Uh, how do you make bleach? Salt and coral tube sample. 
Wait, I have those. Let's drop some of this. Salt? Yeah. Coral tube sample, I have that too. Because I've never tried making this thing here, disinfected water. You need bleach. And to get bleach... Salt deposit, coral tube sample, okay. Bleach is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds and purifying water. Okay. So I can make water with that? Two disinfected water. And I assume that gives you more than like regular water, right? 30 instead of 20, okay. It's a little bit more. All right. All right, well, let's get some water. Food we can just get anywhere thanks to our knife. So we have some batteries. We have everything we need. We have some space in our inventory. It is nighttime though. I really want like a, I really want a glass dome so I can see outside. Uh, what do you need for that? Glass dome. Two enameled glass, one lithium. One lithium. For the glass, I need quartz. I need stalker tooth. Uh, I have a glass already. Two enameled glass. Now I have one. So I need more glass, so more quartz, and then some titanium, which I have plenty. Let's make that dome. Let's make that dome, baby. Oh, let's try uh, sleeping to see if it's gonna be... Although... I guess it is morning already, so... Eh. Let's just get some quick quartz. Shouldn't be too difficult. Here we go, quartz. Let's pick up more than we need so we don't have to do these... Uh, resource runs all the time we can just do a few runs where we like grab everything we can there we go quartz salt we can get pretty easily yeah now that we have a lot of storage space uh, I feel a lot better about like picking up a lot of resources because we have somewhere to stock them until we need them and uh, we need a lot of them so Alright, I guess that's enough for now. I love that you can use these mushrooms for the reactor, because mushrooms are very, very easy to find. Uh, don't really serve any purpose other than making batteries. So that's a very easy way to power the reactor, and apparently you only need like a few things to power it up, so... Everything in this game is very energy efficient, which I absolutely love. Like, it doesn't feel grindy, you know? Everything, it, everything that it asks of the player is very reasonable, very manageable. Um, you know, I played like Valheim a few months ago and like building something took so many resources. Like it was always this grind of like collecting resource and it just wasn't really fun. And uh, I was a little bit scared that this game was going to be like that, but it's not like that at all so far. Uh, they're very generous with their resources. So, all right, let's make some glass, some enameled glass. Now we can make that dome. Let's do it. Can I not? Oh, can I not? Is it because the solar panel is on there? Is it the solar panel? I think that's why this thing is yellow. I think it's telling me I can because of that. I can just put the solar panel back after. Right? There we go.
Nice. Okay, now I get to see outside. Uh, let's put the solar panel back. Also, I love you can just deconstruct stuff and then you get all the resources back. You can just place it back wherever you want. That's awesome. And now I get to see outside. Hell yeah. I'm sure people have made like amazing bases in this game. Uh, the waves kind of clip through the edges there a little bit. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's not a big deal. So it is it like morning right now or you can kind of see the aurora from here just a little bit. Um all right, let's go put our stuff in storage. All the quartz, copper, titanium. We're just gonna keep I guess I don't need the power cell because my C mod uh, recharges while it's docked. Uh, let's bring some batteries just so we can recharge our things. And uh, we get some water. Can grab some food on the way. I th Is it nighttime? It's kind of dark inside. It looks much darker outside than I am. Uh, we do have some good daylight, so let's save. Let's grab some food for the road. Come here, Gary. Save. Right on. And let's go back to the island. Um, I guess let's go down into the depths. What I want to do is go... When we went into that alien structure and we went into that kind of like big pool. Uh, hello. This... I don't think I'd seen this before. Oh, hello. Sealed? Okay, let's cut that. Yeah, we went into the giant pool in that alien temple, I guess I'll call it. Uh, I think it connected to the actual depths outside of the island. And there were like these weird like creatures with like... Um, these big sights. For hands. Ooh. That's a PDA. Bart oh. PDA data. The Gassy Crew Manifest Bart Torgal. Auxiliary Search and Rescue Mission Bart Torgal. Positioned Vice President of Torgal Corp. Lost in space near planet 4546B. Age at time of disappearance 19. He was Vice President at 19. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'll take nepotism for a hundred dollars. The only legitimate child of Paul Torgal, beneficiary of advanced learning techniques and cerebral implants. Oh shit. Digitrained. Digitrained. Uh, in advanced biochemistry and stellar economics. 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 Emissary Kazar reports Bart was accompanying his father to a newly constructed deep space station where he was to serve a five-year term as chief operating officer. All right, so why is there something about Bart Torgal in here specifically? Mobile vehicle bay. Uh, yeah, we have that already. Anything else? This just leads outside. Oh, so you didn't even need to cut through there. And that's all there is here. Okay. Cool. Welcome aboard, Captain. Let's keep going. 
Go over there. A lot of debris. These stalkers love... Look at how much, like, metal they're piling up. I mean, that's good for me, but... Alright, so... We're going northeast, I believe. And uh, even though it scares me, we're gonna have to stick to the depths and uh, dive into the unknown. I need to face my fears if we are to do any progress in this game. Uh, oh. Maybe I can't, actually. Wait, is this the island right here? Yeah, it is. Okay, there has to be like an entrance. There's gotta be an entrance somewhere down there, because I saw this creature down here. I know they're here. Sorry, Rabbit Ray. That's a hatch. That's an actual hatch. Oh, it's a Cyclops bridge fragment. Cyclops bridge? Power transmitter. Uh, tree mushroom. Okay. Ooh. Analysis of these large organic structures reveals a microcosm of cooperating, cohabiting, and competing life forms. The main trunk is a species of coral, some colonies up to 50,000 years old. The caps which line it share more in common with earth fungi. Other organisms grow on the structure wherever there is space and light. Surrounding waters are dense with herbivorous life forms in the 1mm, 10mm range to the extent that larger herbivores appear to have mostly abandoned the area. Exploitable. Can I, like, collect some of this? Oh. Fungal sample. Maybe I can do something with that? I don't know. A uh, tree leech. Ugh. A lot of, like, new life forms around here. Parasitic fungus-like growth found attached to other life forms. An enzyme is released by the organism which dissolves a hole in the skin of the host from which it leaches nutrients directly. Outer tooth-lined jaw serves no identified purpose, may be used during a different stage of the organism's life cycle. Seems like a lot of these creatures have like residual like uh, ancestral parts that were like used by their ancestors in the evolutionary uh, line. <laughs> Exploitable fungal enzymes. Okay. Anything else? Anything else interesting around these parts? Okay. Well, what I'm looking for is an entrance to whatever the hell is below this temple. And I know there has to be one. I mean, it's only a guess, but... Ah! Alright. Okay. 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 Fuck alone?
That's good. I'm fine. So that was fucking horrifying. Um. Well. We've met our first Reaper, guys. That was fun. And uh, there's that creature I was talking about. So it seems like that weird thing it does is like it warps you closer to it so that it can then attack you, right? I'm surprised my... Okay, it was at 7%, so it very nearly got destroyed. So it looks like the Reapers, like they grab you and then they just kind of shake the sea mod and do like a ton of damage and really the only reason it didn't get destroyed was because uh, it was like at a, almost a hundred percent I think but now I'm kind of curious about these fucking okay, you know what I'm gonna save because I actually did survive this uh, I want to scan these fuckers even though it might kill me ooh cyclops engine fragment wait no I have that already All right, you know what Let's tango, bitch. Let's tango. Okay, so there's a reaper down there. I mean, I should have known. I should have figured. I heard the scream, and then I was like, oh, here we fucking go. Oh, look at this guy. Okay, where is this thing at? I want to scan it, though. <laughs> I want to scan it, but I know it's going to kill me. But like the scientific in me. Okay, there's this thing. I want to scan you. Do you think the cannon... Wait, do I have the cannon on me? I do have the cannon on me. Do you think the cannon would work on this thing? It doesn't. It's too big. Okay. Well, let's scan it. Hello, a warper. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, you want to hurt me, huh? You want to eat me, huh? You're not gonna... Ugh. 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 That looks like an alien that could talk to you. Like, that looks too much like a... You know. Yeah, you wanna grab me, but you're not gonna. Alright, let's read it. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, you know, I... Uh, man, I really thought this was gonna happen once I went, like, further deep. I didn't think they would be, like, just anywhere like this. Like, I saw one near the Aurora... But I thought like they were maybe only behind the aura, like that that general region. <sighs> I hope I didn't wake up my girlfriend by screaming like this. Warper. An aggressive creature with the ability to teleport itself and others in space. No genetic crossover identified with indigenous life forms. What does that mean? Are you saying it's not native to this planet? Interesting. Maybe it's from a different planet. Demonstrates no recognized defensive behavior. Mechanisms located in the head region provide its warping capability with its, which it uses to stalk its targets. Uh, appears to hunt other life forms, but no digestive organs have been identified. Internal structure considerably more complex than other known organisms. Unable to distinguish whether organic or artificial in nature. Further research required. So it might not even be like a creature native to the planet. Could just be something that was introduced or like even fabricated or... Uh, wait, when did my life go down so much? Did I, did I get hurt while in the Seamoth? Oh, shit. Um... Well, I need to go down there, but now I know there's a freaking reaper down there, so... I mean, we could try and avoid it. We can try and avoid it. It seems to be chilling mostly down there. I don't know. Like, this is where I want to go. Down there is where I want to go. Now my life is really low. And if there's one, that means there's probably others. Like, I don't know if they're very territorial. Ugh. There's got to be more down there. What is this? 
Well, they do alert you to their presence, which is very nice of them. Like, they let out a horrifying scream before actually attacking you, so... I mean, not that I could do much about it. <laughs> I guess I'm surprised they were down D because the one I saw around the Aurora was very close to the surface. So, you know, I thought they were closer to the surface. I should have brought a health pack. I thought I had more. My life is pretty low now. I mean, if I die, it's not a big deal. It's just... And now it's nighttime. God damn it. Should I just go back? I have been recording for quite a while already. Like, I'm gonna have to stop soon, but... I don't want to end on such a... <laughs> such a dumb ending. Um... I guess we can try and go inside. The temple through the door would also allow us to see if maybe we, I missed anything in the temple itself because last time I was kind of in a hurry you know okay, let me drink some damn water for Christ's sake let's see if maybe we missed anything in this place and if not, then I can just try and go back in that big pool, and we can explore from there. Out of the safety of our Seamoth. <laughs> so that we can just get eaten and killed horribly. By a goddamn Reaper. I think I checked all these data terminals already. If I die, I'll just reload, and don't give me that shit about safe scumming, like... If it's in the game, you're allowed to use it. The game allows you to save and reload your save, so I think to me it's fine to do it. Okay, this is where I wanted to go. This has to be connected to the outside, right? But there's... There's gotta be Reapers down there. Like, I was curious about this arch there. It's weirdly silent. Okay, there's the warper there. Okay, it does connect to the surface. Oh, I could drop a beacon here. Call it like alien, uh, alien temple gate. Alien Temple Gate. Um, because clearly you can see the surface from here, so. Um, oh man, I'm scared of going out there because I feel like there's definitely gonna be Reapers, but. Okay, I think. I'm gonna leave this here so I can see it from far away. Um, beacon. Yeah, let's keep this visible. Let's put it like in yellow, I guess. And then I'm gonna go back to the sea moth because I want to be able to see where it is. Uh, relating to the surface. There's the stasis rifle again. Uh, I'm gonna guess I can't grab that, right? Nope. It's encased in this thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd already seen everything here. Uh, there was this gate, and for some reason this one I couldn't activate. I don't know why the other ones I found in the caverns was active, but this one isn't. Maybe this one would take us back from one of the other facilities. And so I need to activate it on the other side first before it can transport me back here, you know? It's like more of a way back. 
that would make sense to me. My steps are so loud. Why I gotta be making as much noise as possible? And over there is like that main control thing, which we can't activate, but which we will need to activate if we want to leave this place. Okay, so there's nothing else here. So let's go back to the Seamoth. What have we learned about the Reapers? We do have like a... What's it called? A creature decoy. Hmm. Huh. This is supposed to work against Reapers, but it uses a wiring kit. And it cannot be reclaimed once deployed. But I think these are going to be mandatory to use because like how else are you going to deal with the Reapers? Maybe by using like weapons on your vehicles, but we're not at that point yet. And so like if you want to go explore and there's Reapers nearby, your only option is pretty much to use these. I just wish it didn't use a wiring kit because these are kind of... They're kind of hard to get. Mm. I would really love to scan a Reaper. Obviously, that's... I'm gonna guess that's pretty much suicide. <laughs> Maybe if I could attach a scanner to my Seamoth and my Seamoth was like very resistant. Oh, I could get like that like... Uh, hull upgrade. At least now I've learned that you can survive one Reaper encounter without your Seamoth being destroyed if your Seamoth is at full power. So, live and learn. <laughs> That's good to know. But then, nothing stops it from just attacking me again right after and then kill me. So, we need a way to deal with them. Uh, this place is like unnecessarily large. Or what it is. Like, there's not really that much inside, and it's so big. Okay, so there's the entrance right there. I mean, that makes sense. It's directly below the temple itself. Okay. Well, it is daytime now, which, uh, there's that at least. Let's eat a little bit. I wonder if now that I have, like, the, the fire knife. Maybe I can use it on these little cave fuckers. Let me try that. Maybe you can eat those? Although... I don't think it said they were edible, right? Scavenger. Avoid or incapacitate. Okay, you can't eat them. But maybe you can kill them? I don't know. But yeah, I understand why people don't like reloading a save. Saves coming. Um, but like, it's a mechanic in the game. I feel like any mechanic in the game you're allowed to kind of use. If the if the developers didn't want you to be able to go back to a previous point, this game would operate on Dark Souls rules. You know, you would die and then like you can never reload. It just things just happen as they do and that's it. But that's not how this game works. You can save. So, but I also understand why people don't really like it because it feels like you're kind of. It does feel like the coward way out. But what if I am a coward? Have you considered that? Alright, let's see. Let's be a little bit careful. We'll keep an eye out for these fuckers. They are quite loud, so... Okay, so... It was super dark before now. I guess it just happened that every time I came here, it happened to be at night. That's why it was so dark. So now we got this thing. Uh, did I miss anything? Last time I came here, I was in very much a big hurry. So I kind of came through here very quickly. I can hear a reaper out there, but I think it's pretty far away. So I should be able to activate this warp. In theory. 
but uh, there's nowhere I can put like a tablet or anything, so maybe not. Hmm. Oh, there's another thing there. Hey, you fucker. I don't think they can, like, do anything to you while you're in your Seamoth. I think. Oh. Hello. What is this? Is there an entrance? Not... Not really. I'm staying in my Seamoth. I don't want to go out there. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. We got a tablet. This feels like a trap. So this scream I'm hearing, that's the Reapers, right? I guess I'm gonna have to learn to like recognize that. That's the sound that tells you, be careful, because uh, this area is dangerous. Uh, doesn't look like there's an entrance to these, uh, these weird blocks. Right? This is just like the temple or the facility. Hmm. Okay, so I don't think there's actually like anything you can do here. At least not yet. Well, then I guess I'll just be on my way. Uh, I would want to keep going, but I've been recording for quite a long time already. And I do need to stop, so... Well, hey. At least you got something at the end there, right? I'm sure you guys were waiting for this moment. For me to meet my first Reaper. Well, there you go. It's happened now. We've ripped off the band-aid. Um, I'm gonna die a few years younger, but it's fine. About the save reloading, I know that when you die, you don't really lose that much. Like, you lose a few resources that you were carrying, I think. Uh, I don't think you can actually drop your tools. I think you just drop resources. And so, it's not a big deal. You know, you could just swim back and go get your stuff back. Uh, for me, it's just to save some time. Like, I'm not trying to weasel my way out of suffering consequences. It's more like, like, my time is limited. <laughs> I don't want to spend half my recording session just swimming back to get my Seamoth back or getting my resources back. If I have the option of just going to a recent save, of course I'd rather do that, but... Still no new messages. I just came here to grab a med kit. There we go. So... I'm still confused about this, like, Commander Keen thing. This is Officer Keen in Lightpod 19. The captain is gone. I have assumed command. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. Which we found. We group one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. Stay together and good luck. This message will now repeat. Rendezvous coordinates corrupted. Transmission origin coordinates downloaded. Again, I don't know what all these comments I got about me missing the coordinates was. Because he says we're going southwest of the crash site, and then you go there, and it's the island. Isn't it? The island I already found? And people said, like, oh, you went to the island, but these aren't the coordinates. But, like, well, then what are they? Codes and clues? Transmission origin. What? Wait, have I found LifePod 7? 
one kilometer southwest of the Aurora Stern section. Oh, is this what people meant? Lifepod 7. Wait, have I found Lifepod 7 in the previous episode? I can't remember. I must have, right? Because I, I remember thinking like that I'd seen every Lifepod. Because this has nothing to do with Lifepod 19, which is the one that had Officer Keen in it. The Stern section. I remember reading this and being like, what's the Stern? I don't actually know. Let me let me Google that. <laughs> what is the stern of a ship? Is it the back or the front? Okay, the stern is the back of the ship. So it's one kilometer southwest of the stern. But if I go to the stern, there's going to be fucking reapers there, right? My memory is really failing me. Did I see LifePod 7? Let me check my notes. Oh, you're right. I didn't. I think I didn't get LifePod 7. Okay, well... That's going to give me something to check next time. I don't really have time to check it now, but next episode, I will go there. I guess we'll go to the stern of the ship, try and avoid the fucking reapers, and then just go uh, at the bottom of the ocean. It says it's sunk 200 meters, so it can be that deep. And it's one kilometer southwest. So we're going to do that next time. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do it now. But uh, we do need some stuff to look forward to, right? So, we'll do that next time. Oh, we could find it with the camera, actually. Right? It might be too far away, though. So there's the stern. You know what? Just as a little bonus, let's try and find it with the camera, but I think it's going to be too far. I think the camera's going to stop working if we get that far. When we were getting at like 300 meters of distance, we just it just didn't work anymore. Do the Reapers attack the cameras, you think? Probably. Okay, the image is starting to get a little, a little worse. I think we're getting a little too far now. Okay, so let's say we're going southwest. I'm not really at the stern, but like, it's close enough. Let's see if we can see anything. Well, there's a wreck, which I don't think I've seen. I think that's a new wreck. I might lose the signal before we find it. Maybe there's a way to upgrade the cameras so that like they don't get disconnected from very far away okay yeah i'm not gonna reach it so it's fine we just saved just before doing this i just have to go there myself next time <laughs> so man it's gonna be a very long episode even if i edit out like some of the base building and stuff it's still gonna be really long so that was really scary like i heard that scream and then i turned around and it was just, like right there coming at me so yeah, I got shook there, but at least we've seen it now. Again, I'm gonna try finding Life Pod 7 in the next episode. Uh, we made some good progress with the base now. We got some storage room, we got some nice like fabricators, and like we've resolved the power situation, so I'm happy about that. So overall, some pretty good progress, I think. Like I said at the beginning, we're really getting into like the meat of this game now, where we need to go deeper, we need to go where it's scary, we need to go where we don't really have any clues what we're gonna find. Uh, is gonna be very challenging for me because I am really scared of what I'm gonna find out there. I'm really scared of the deep ocean. Uh, but I'm gonna make an effort just for you guys, just for you. So once again, please remember to go vote in the poll. It's in the pinned comment down below. And also uh, go and leave me some questions for the Q&A. As always, remember that you can catch next week's episode right now on my Patreon. It's in the description below. A big, big thank you to all the people who already support me on there. Really appreciate it. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. I had fun playing this. Hope you had fun watching it. And I hope to see you next week for some more Subnautica. See y'all.